Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to talk about line boil. So let's get quickly into it. What is line boil? Well, this is an effect that happens in traditional cell animation where an object is redrawn every single frame, even if that object isn't moving. And what ends up happening, because those lines don't exactly match up every frame, you get this kind of boiling effect. Now, in traditional animation, you want to minimize this as much as possible. But for motion graphics and After Effects in particular, we can use this to kind of stylize our animation and make it look a little bit more organic and like it was drawn every single frame. So what we want to do is we want to give our lines texture and we want that texture to change okay, so and look random okay, every yeah, single frame. And then we want to give our lines a little bit of wobble so that they don't look perfectly straight and we also want that wobble to change every single frame so that it looks like it's being redrawn every single frame so I'm gonna take you through the steps in After Effects on how to achieve that so with that being said let's jump into After Effects got my animation here that I want to apply this a boiling effect to open and um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to layer new adjustment layer and I'm gonna make sure that the adjustment layer was added to the top of all my layers so that whatever effects I apply to this layer will affect everything below it if it's not at the top uh, for some reason just move it to the top and I'm going to rename it just so I know what this adjustment layer is doing and now with that adjustment layer selected I'm gonna go up to the effects and presets panel and I'm going to search for turbulent displace and as soon as I apply this to the adjustment layer, you're gonna see that it's already applying to the image. So with that being said, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the size and I'm gonna turn the size way down to about four, three or four. Okay, and then the amount, I could really see that the way that it's distorting now has been scaled down. So that pattern has been scaled down, but I wanna bring the amount down too because I don't want the amount to be so extreme. So I'm gonna bring the amount down to about 30. And there we go. Now, uh, like I said in the breakdown of this effect, I want to make, sh make this uh, distortion change every single frame so if I play this back now you'll see that it's just static so the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use the evolution I'm going to alt click on this stopwatch which will open up this little text editor here and I'm gonna apply an expression to this property and I'm gonna apply this expression time time is one of the most simple expressions you can apply in After Effects what time does is time takes the current time and inputs that as seconds into the value of whatever property you've applied this expression to. So, for example, if I go to one second here, you can see that it's put the evolution at one degree because time is one second. And then if I go to two seconds, same thing right there, two. But if we play this back, there's almost no change in this pattern. If we just zoom in, uh, there's such a subtle change you can't even tell. So we need to multiply this uh, time, whatever the time is, by a big number. So I like to just multiply by about 1,500. Now, if I play it back, you can tell that every time that I, uh, every frame, this pattern is different. If I just go frame by frame, you can see that it changes every single frame. And it changes enough that it looks random. Now, there's another expression I like to put on here, which is, uh, and you have to put this one before the time expression, but it's posterize, posterize time. And what posterize time does is it allows you to give a specific frame rate to a specific property instead of applying a frame rate to the entire composition. So I'm gonna choose six because my main composition is uh, 12 frames per second. So I'm gonna cut that in half just to give this change a little bit more of a stuttery feel. And I need to end the posterize time with a semicolon. And now if I play this back, you can see that the uh, rate of change in the uh, the noise pattern is a little bit slower. So if I go frame by frame, it only changes every two frames. 
that's not necessary, but I, it's, it's just a little bit more of uh, an addition to the effect that I like. So there we go. Now I need the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the effects uh, panel here and I'm going to select my uh, effect and I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to basically reverse these two values. So I'm going to go a little bit higher on the size. So what the second effect is doing is it's giving a little bit more of that boiling effect overall in terms of the, the lines. You can especially see it in this line right here. And that's pretty much it. Pretty simple, right? Um, I want to show another uh, example here. Here I've got a little title thing that I've made that I'm laying over some footage. And if I were to apply the same effects on the adjustment layer, uh, you will see that it does some really weird things because it's also applying to this footage layer in the background. And you can especially see it in this particular footage because we've got a brick wall with a lot of straight lines. And so you can see that wobble. Now, it, you might like this look, but I don't want this effect to, to affect um, everything in this frame, but I also don't want to have to individually adjust every single frame because even now I still have a lot of different frames. So I'm going to show you a little trick. If we just take these effects and we copy them and then we turn off our adjustment layer and we go to, I'm going to apply this effect to this little border here. Um, I'm going to apply it there and I'll play that back. So you see that it's applied now. Now, if I select these two effects and go to edit, copy with property links, I can now paste these effects to all the different layers that I need to paste them to. Okay, but now because I copied with property links, you'll see that all these properties are red. That's because After Effects has created a uh, copy of these effects with an expression applied to all these different properties. That's why they're appearing red that link back to this main one. So now if I want to, uh, say increase this, you can see that it's, uh, because I'm changing this property, all the effects on all these other layers are changing as well because they're all linked to this original, uh, effect. So that's pretty much it. And now I have this little title card that I can edit. And I can watch this back and then maybe I think, oh, you know what? It's, it's wobbling a little too much. So I'll go back to this original one. So there we go. I just turned down the amount. It affects everything. And that's pretty much it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, hit that like button. It really does help me with the algorithms. And if you have ideas for future YouTube tutorials or specifically if you have questions about this tutorial, please leave those questions in the comment section below. I always try to answer those questions because I remember how hard it is when you're starting out to learn After Effects. So I always try to be as helpful as I can and give thorough answers to those questions. So if you have questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video and you want more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload the next video. And there's going to be more videos coming up because we're all stuck at home. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. I hope see you guys later.